Welcome to the Googleplex. This is an incredible place with lots of great stuff being worked on every single day. Before I worked here, I always wondered what it would be like to come to the Googleplex, meet up with a Googler, and have coffee with them, and just chat about what they do, how they do it, and why they do it. And today we're going to do exactly that. Welcome to this episode of Coffee with a Googler. I'm Lawrence Moroni, and today we have a really special show. And if you only ever watch one episode, let it be this one, because today we have a cloud developer advocate called Heidi Dose who's joining us. And Heidi is a whole lot more than just a cloud developer advocate. She's a really inspirational woman with a great background and a fabulous story. But before we get to that, tell us all about being a cloud developer advocate. What do you do? So I'm on our Google Cloud Platform team, mm -hmm. and I work with our cloud product managers, our sales team, and our engineering team to to kind of figure out what are we doing with cloud, um, customer needs, and really how do we also connect the dots internal to Google to leverage what we're doing with the Google Cloud Platform. Cool. Do you have a particular favorite technology in cloud? I'm an App Engine guy. Just. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, so. Uh, what I'm really in, you know intrigued with what we're doing is what we're doing with our genomics platform. Okay. Um, obviously, I have a passion for how do we change the you know the the delivery in the future of healthcare. So. Google Cloud Platform is allowing us to do some really interesting things and talk with our Google Life Sciences team, who is doing some great research and, and interesting projects. Mm -hmm. And all of that living on Google Cloud Platform, along with genomics, and then just creating an infrastructure that will allow other companies to build their medical tools and, and products on our service. Right. Now, now you've mentioned genomics and medical tools and products and I know you've got this great background. You used to be like a competitive windsurfer <laughs> and, and, and then life happened. So tell us about it. Well, I did. I, um, I grew up in the sports industry. I was a competitive windsurfer, skier. I played um, multiple sports, a variety of sports as a, mm -hmm. as a child growing up. And uh, then one day Turns out I actually was uh, diagnosed with a really rare heart arrhythmia. Wow. And I uh, kind of had my engine tweaked. <laughs> and next thing you know, um, technology became very important both on the inside and the outside. Nice. And then one day you learned something about your heart. I did. I, I had one of those moments in life that changes everything. Okay. Um, I was 18 years old. And I was going in, in between seasons, between ski season and windsurfing season, mm -hmm. um, in order to have some, some surgery on my knee to kind of clean up uh, a little bit of mess I'd made in there. And I also had my first EKG okay. as part of the, the pre-surgery pre-op. So they, they did the, uh, they put all the little stickers on me and the nurse is there and the, the strip starts coming out of the machine and her eyes get bigger and bigger. And, <laughs> and next thing you know, the cardiologist is there and it turns out that uh, 270 beats per minute is not normal. Wow. Yeah. And so I thought, ah, oh, that's why I couldn't count my pulse. You know, it started it's just to, so fast. It right? was. And my heart rate, it turns out, would go up as high as 270, but it would also go down at like 12 and 14 beats per minute. So it was just really irregular. Wow. So they, there I am, healthy, active, 18 year old athlete. And they said, no knee surgery. We're sending you off to the coronary care unit, and you're now going to become. Uh, the start this journey of a, a heart patient. Oh wow! So that led you to like lots of pacemakers, right? You've... It, it did. First, it, it led me to the. Um, I I spent a month in the hospital while they tried to figure out what to do with me. Okay. They tried all kinds of experimental drugs. They tried to figure out what it was that I had, and I ended up in the medical journals because it's like, well, we found <laughs> something new, and they said, gee, we're not sure why you lasted as long as you did, and we don't know how long you'll be around and there's not much more we can do for you. Wow. So I did. At 18, that's gotta be hard. It was, and so wow. I moved to Maui to Windsurf because I figured business school was you know, not gonna be as necessary if mm -hmm. I wasn't going to be around very long. Right. And then the following year, I was invited to participate in an experimental surgery. Okay. And they electrocuted my AV node, which is the part of your heart that coordinates the atrium and the ventricle and makes it go okay. to, Okay. And I became 100% pacemaker dependent. Okay. And that was 30 plus years ago. Wow. So I have been on the cutting edge of pacemaker technology for about uh, 30 years, and I'm on my seventh one. On your seventh one? My seventh one. Wow. And, and now it's like you're not just sitting around with this pacemaker. You're doing pretty extreme and intense sports with it, right? I am. Uh, it's interesting because 
you, you have a choice. You can either be a victim of your condition, mm -hmm. or you can figure out how to do really cool stuff, even though you've got to deal with it. Right. So I, um, I had been, a, I was a professional windsurfer when I had the first one put in. Mm -hmm. And I just, I never considered myself a heart patient. I just figured I was a girl with a bad electrical system and we fixed it so I kept doing what I was doing. Right. But those first heartbeats were really clunky <laughs> and uh, kind of this big cigarette pack of a uh, battery in my chest. Uh, over the years, the, the heartbeats have gotten smoother. There's more sensors built into the, the pacemaker. Right. So every time I get a new one, I get new technology. Just okay. like everything else we do, the technology gets better. And you know, when people ask, oh, gosh, you know, don't you wish you could just get it and have it stay in? Mm -hmm. It's like, no. You I want get, the upgrades. I want the upgrades. <laughs> <laughs> for me, I just think about getting a new phone for the upgrades, but wow, yeah, oh, a no. new pacemaker. <laughs> no, I get new heartbeats, and then the heartbeats do more. And right. um, in 2010, uh, due to the unintended consequences of lots of surgeries, I had to have uh, open heart surgery, and I decided to be a competitive cyclist. Okay. And that's when this journey of extreme endurance sports started. <sighs> It's not the usual thing people go, it's like, I had open heart surgery, so I'm deciding to become a competitive cyclist. And <laughs> where, where did you make that connection? You know, I, because I had grown up playing sports, I, I didn't want to lose being me. Okay. Um, and I just, uh, I think I was uh, too stubborn mm -hmm. to let heart issues take the life that I really liked away. Right. So I just thought, what the heck, let's see how much I can do. Okay, that's, that's just pretty amazing. now. One of the things is like to it, to be able to cycle and to enhance your ability mm -hmm. to cycle. You're using technology, right? Yep. There's a lot of sensors in the mm -hmm. pacemaker, and you're using that to manage your health. Can you tell us a little bit about how all of that works? Sure. So there's a couple of things. There's what happens, you know, inside my chest with the pacemaker, and that is um, the pacemaker has a gyroscope. Mm -hmm. It has um, oxygen utilization, muscle stimulation, electrical impulses. It takes all of this information and quickly determines, hey, this is either, you know, a tachycardia or, oh, it's actually exercise. Okay. Um, and, and it does a bit of machine learning. So that first uh, 30 minutes of something, it's kind of taking all this information in and saying, okay, great, go do what you need to do. And so I'll, you know, if I'm doing a mountain bike race and I've got a you know, two hour climb in front of me, right. the heart, my pacemaker will know what's going on. Okay. So that's what's happening inside. But it can still be really scary just mentally for me. Like, how hard can I push before I explode something? Right. Which I prefer not to explode something. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> so now we have all these really great wearable technologies. We've got, um, you know, between my, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, I have a, um, you know, Performance athletes, we've had access to chest straps and right. like the polar devices or Garmin has some, some things. But because of my heart failure medication and my pacemaker, the chest straps don't work. Okay. So it took a long time till we finally got to where they have these optical light sensors. Okay. So Mio Global, a um, couple different companies make a really great wrist-based heart rate monitor mm -hmm. that I use that I can then determine you know, when I'm cycling, am I safe? Am I in that realm that I need to be? And then also, can I push harder? What okay. more should I be doing? And, you know, that's how it's really important, you know, to give me the confidence as a heart patient to feel safe that I can keep doing what I need to do. And then as an athlete, mm -hmm. am I getting the performance that I should be getting? Can I train harder? How much harder can I train? Right, and now not just athletes can benefit from this mm -hmm. technology, right? So just the average everyday person can have a sensor. And exactly, and, and I found, you know, this, being a heart patient for as many years as I've, I've been, and having to deal with, um, you know, the initial surgery, mm -hmm. new pacemakers being implanted, open heart surgery, you know, heart failure, there's a lot of really scary moments. There's, mm -hmm. there's a, you know, these times where it's like, gosh, you know, uh, is my heart doing what it's supposed to be doing? You know, should I just stay safe, get in the fetal position and lay on the couch? Right. Um, because you don't know what's going on inside. And with these devices and these sensors and, and things, I now have that window inside of 
you know, what's happening. So that makes me feel safer. And okay. with that safety, I'm more confident and I'm less apt to have that anxiety that starts to spin. And then the like anxiety and the fear turns into panic attacks. Mm. And for anyone that's ever had a panic attack, you truly feel like you're dying. Right. And that can oftentimes for an individual, and, and I've done it myself, that ends up being a trip to the cardiologist or the emergency room. There you are consuming these really expensive healthcare dollars mm -hmm. because you're just sure you're having a heart issue when really you're kind of having a scary just issue. An, uh, right. And the sensors allow you to, to catch that and stop that before it turns into an issue. Right, and, and they also, would they allow like the doctor to preempt instead of like maybe you visiting monthly or every three months or something like mm -hmm. that, that they can take a look at your data constantly and then they go, ah, I need to see her now. Exactly, so with my waiting. It, it would, so two things there is that in, I can eliminate having to go in for pacer checks as often because my Boston Scientific mm -hmm. device has something called the Latitude Communicator, and it's a passive interrogator that I can just have in my home. It's collecting data from my pacemaker and sending it to my physician, and they can kind of look at that. Everything's working as intended, mm -hmm. you know, big thumbs up. Um, if not, if there's actually an issue, they can proactively call me and say, hey, let's, let's just check that out. Um, the other thing is that no one ever found my heart issue until I went in for something else. Right. Because it never happens when you're at the doctor's. Mm -hmm. Now pe people have the ability to collect more information on their health. And if they do see something that's going on, they can s go to the, their physician and they can say, see this event, this mm -hmm. is what happened, here's the actual data, and here's how I felt. Now it becomes something that's actionable. Right. And you find things much quicker, et cetera, et cetera. Wow. That's, and I, I just still find it amazing, though, that despite all of this, despite this background that you've had, that, you know, these cycle races that you do, they're tough races, right? <laughs> I, I saw the one in Vancouver, you effectively climbed the height of Mount Everest yeah, right, over the so period I, of a few days. Uh, I just finished, um, it's called BC Bike Race, and it's a seven-day mountain bike stage race. Mm -hmm. And it's through um, some of the most technical mountain biking in uh, kind of the, the North Vancouver, Whistler, Squamish area, kind right. of the, the, the birth of, of uh, mountain biking. <laughs> and we did seven back-to-back -back days over 32,000 feet of climbing. Right. Um, That's the Mount Everest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and... Then this last weekend, I just did a uh, Leadville stage race where we were doing climbs up to over 12,500 feet in elevation. Wow. Um, and technology has made all of this possible. Obviously, you put yes. your hard work in as well, but you know the technology has been one of the enablers for you. It is. Without technology, I couldn't be doing what I'm doing. Uh, mm -hmm. Without the improvement in technology that the pacemaker company does, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have the heartbeats. And without the technology that things like our mobile devices, uh, the, the sensors, allow me as a, a heart patient to be safe and as an athlete to have more performance. Cool, now you're a developer advocate on the cloud platform. Yes. Now, are you bringing your cloud skills to this? So all this data is great, but how do you actually get it to the right people? Right. Well, it has to live in the cloud. So I look at what we're doing with the Google Cloud Platform as an enabling technology that will really allow the future of digital health and customized personal health to happen mm -hmm. because our Google Cloud Platform is where the data can be ingested from the devices, from the doctor's office, from, from the devices. It can be analyzed and then it can be made actionable and those actionable bits can be delivered to uh, healthcare professional, mm -hmm. researchers, um, individual patients, and whoever needs to use it. Wow. And we're really only getting started. We're just right? getting started. So it's, uh, it's, well, thank you so much. It's such an inspirational story. It's, um, I mean, I, I find myself like hard to ride my bicycle at times. <laughs> like, and and, and I don't, I'm on my zero pacemaker. And so just thanks for the inspiration. And um, I best of luck. I know you've got some great races coming up soon. So uh, yeah. hopefully we'll get to see a little bit more of what you do in them. And uh, we'll get to see a little bit more of how you continue to use technology to push the edge of, you know, how it can make your life better as well as other people's life better. Wonderful. Well, thank so. you so much. 
So thanks, everybody. I hope you really enjoyed the show as much as I did. Heidi's just such an inspiration to me, and it's making me get up off the couch and ride my bike this weekend. Thanks, Heidi. <laughs> and uh, if you have any questions for me or if you have any questions for Heidi, please just leave them in the comments below. And if you want to watch any more of the great content that we have for Google developers, take a look at the Google Developers channel.